Praise the Lord. The day before the storm. Hallelujah. That's the message I come with to you today. Hallelujah. It's sickening to realize that the world could be living carelessly while evil locks around the corner. Hallelujah. In Psalms of our original, incidentally, I have um, some books I've written. I've titled them Psalms of our original. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to be reading from them. These books will be out soon. Hope you get a copy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Psalms of our original, chapter 21, verse 1, it says, I have raised a storm against Nigeria for Biafra's sake, just like I did for Israel in Egypt. If they will not listen and let my people go, much devastation will result when this storm makes its landing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What's a storm? We need to understand this so that we can place our message in its proper place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wikishionary gave three interesting definitions of a storm that I want to read to you. Number one, it says, any disturbed state of the atmosphere, especially as affecting the Earth's surface and strongly implying destructive and unpleasant weather. Number two, a violent agitation of human society, a civil, political, or domestic commission, commotion, violent outbreak. Three, it says in bracket, military, a violent assault on a stronghold or fortified position. Hallelujah. Storms can be natural events. Hallelujah. Naturally occurring events. But quite a lot of times, God also uses storms to, 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 to judge the wicked for disobeying his, his will and his word. Hallelujah. For going against his will and his word. Prophets of old, God have you had used quite a number of them to prophesy about storms, to warn nations, especially Israel, about storms that were coming their way. Hallelujah. Let's look at one of these or two of these prophets so that we can understand, put, understand how God could use storms to, uh, to, to, to impress on the people his awesome power. Hallelujah. Jeremiah is the first person I want us to talk about. A very interesting character in the Bible. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, the message Bible, Jeremiah, the, the word of God declares, God's message came again. So what do you see now? I said, I see a boiling pot deep down towards us. Then God told me disaster will pour out of the north on everyone living in this land. You need to understand that Jeremiah, of course, told the people. Not everybody was pleased. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 19 to 20, Amplified Bible. He said, my soul, my soul, I read in anguish and pain all the walls of my heart. My heart is pounding and troubling within me. I cannot be silent. For you have heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, when God, when he saw the picture God was showing him, he became alarmed because he loved Israel dearly. He couldn't forbear. He had to keep speaking. Praise the Lord. He says, news of one terrible disaster comes after another, for the whole land is devastated. Suddenly my tents are spoiled and destroyed. My tents, curtains, ruined in a moment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why in Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1, when the Lord told him to go and he said, roam, up, roam back and forth, the mercy of God wanted to save Israel. He said, roam back and forth through the cities, streets of Jerusalem. And look now and take note and look in her open squares to see if you can find a man as Abraham saw in Sodom, one who, has, who is just, who has integrity and moral courage and seeks truth faithfully. Then I will pardon Jerusalem. For the sake of one uncompromisingly righteous man. Hallelujah. When God gave Jeremiah this thing, this instruction, the King James Bible says Jeremiah began to run to and fro. He ran through the seats of Jerusalem, to the squares. He was looking for a just man. Israel, Jerusalem did not believe. Hallelujah. So they lost that opportunity. In Jeremiah chapter 19, 14 to 15, Amplified Bible. Then Jeremiah came from Tophet, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy. And he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, All the people, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am going to bring on this city and on all its towns, all the devastation I have declared against it, because they have become stiff-necked and refused to hear and obey my words. Praise the Lord. Were there other men of God in Jerusalem? Yes, they were. Did they believe Jeremiah? No, they didn't believe Jeremiah. Why didn't they hear from God? Because they didn't want to hear from God. 
Hallelujah. They were not prophets of doom. They saw Jeremiah as a prophet of doom. But Jeremiah was speaking the word of God. They could have delivered Jerusalem by simply going on on their knees and saying, Lord, these words that Jeremiah speak, are they yours? Of course, God would have confirmed the words. But not these hard-hearted people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The people were willing to listen to Jeremiah, but not their leaders. Hallelujah. This is where we talk about the impact of negative leadership, especially in the church. Hallelujah. The people, the leaders, can lead the people to their destruction when they are not completely yielded to God, when pride begins to interfere in their ability to hear God's word and to do his will. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 1 to 3, New Living Translation. He said, Now Posh, son of Ema, the priest in charge of the temple of the Lord, heard what Jeremiah was prophesying. So he arrested Jeremiah the prophet and had him whipped and put in stocks at the, begin, at the Benjamin gate of the Lord's temple. Jeremiah suffered a lot of hardship in the hands of priests, men of God. Hallelujah. The next day when Posho finally released him, Jeremiah said, Posho, the Lord has changed your name. From now on, you are to be called a man who lives in terror. For this is what the Lord says. I will send terror upon you and all your friends, and you will watch as they are slaughtered by the swords of the enemy. I will hang the people of Judah over to, I will hang the people of Judah over to the king of Babylon. He will take them captive to Babylon or run them through with the sword. Ah, massacre by Allah. He said, I will let you, I will let your enemies plunder Jerusalem. All the famed treasures of the city, the precious jewels and gold and silver of your kings will be carried off to Babylon. As for you, Pasha, <laughs> he said, you and all your household will go as captives to Babylon. He said, there you will die and be buried. You and all your friends to whom you prophesied that everything will be right. Praise the Lord. At this point, I want to call attention, the attention of men of God in this land. Those who, who seem to want to speak their heart desires, their own minds, over God's mind. They prophesy their will and they take it for granted that that will cause the will of God to be turned around. Hallelujah. I want you to know, like you heard here, there are always, there's always, there are always consequences. For going against the will of God and for leading God's people away from God, hallelujah, against the will of God. Psalms of I, Reginald, chapter 45, verse 4, volume 1. I will bring forth Biafra to the amazement of all who did not believe. <laughs> God will bring forth Biafra to your amazement. He said, many who spoke prophecies in my name that I did not speak will be ashamed in that day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Moses is the next man I want to talk about. Moses was a great freedom factor. Hallelujah. A man of God. Exodus chapter 3 verse 19 to 20. God has seen and had respect for the cries and the sufferings of Egypt and he had called Moses to send him. Praise the Lord. He said, and I, I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after he will let you go. God was sending Moses. He was telling him, go and tell them, I will come with a stone. To deliver Egypt, Israel from Egypt. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 5 and Exodus chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, New Living Translation. Say, after the presentation, this presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go, so that they may hold a festival in my honor in the wilderness. Is that so? Pharaoh retorted, And who is the Lord? Why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord. I will not let Israel go. Hallelujah. Because God showed one sign after the other. And eventually, Pharaoh had to let Israel go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to read to you the words that God said to me, spoke to me specifically concerning Nigeria. So that you understand where the title of this message is coming. The day coming from. The day before the storm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Some of our, some of our original Chapter 162, verse 8, verse 1. He says, To Biafra you must, because this is my express will. It must come to pass. Hallelujah. Psalm of our original chapter 64, verse 1, 3, and 6, volume 1. He says, I have called Biafra into existence. No force above the earth, on earth or beneath the earth, can change that. I will fall upon those that will seek to do so and crush them to powder. The world will see just how powerless they are before me when I have accomplished my will of bringing Biafra into existence. Those, those who are determined to die, instead of seeing Biafra be, will die and yet Biafra will be. He says, those who seek, who walk against my will, will face my wrath. They will not need anyone to tell them 
that they took the wrong turn. Even if the whole world gathers against Biafra, I will stand against them and cause them to fall. I have commanded a great storm that will ravage everyone or nation that will stand against the emergence of Biafra. They will sleep and will fall. Hallelujah. The will of God will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. The one that speaks is the one who created the heavens and the earth. He hung the planetary bodies. Jupiter, Mercury, the sun, the moon. He created all of them and put them on their paths and made laws for them. To date, they obey those laws. God controls everything. Hallelujah. He's the one that says, I will bring forth their flower. Hallelujah. No man can stop him. Hallelujah. Psalms of our original chapter 17, verse 1, verse 1. He said, Nigeria will not be able to stand the storm I am bringing against her. Her foundations will be discovered when my storm passes over her. The wicked leaders of this land will perish with that storm. Judgment for their years of negligence is at hand. Psalms of our original chapter 6, 72, verse 6, verse 1. He said, my terror will not spare them. The world will be shocked at the destruction I'm about to bring upon this land for Biafra's sake. If they were wise, they would let my people go. Hallelujah. Are they wise? No. Psalm of our original, Psalms of our original chapter 73, verse 1, verse 1. Pharaoh must let my people go or I will destroy Egypt for my people's sake, my people Israel's sake. The time I gave them is taken away. Soon they will have to face my wrath. Hallelujah. Psalms of our original chapter 75, verse 6, verse 1. He said, even if Egypt forgets what I did to them to free Israel, this wicked alliance in Nigeria will never forget the demonstration of my power, with which, which will free Biafra from their grip. Hallelujah. Psalms of our original chapter 76, verse 4, verse 1. I will raise a great storm against Nigeria and totally break their resolve to hold Biafra from going. They will speedily agree to let my people go. You will go on your own terms. Hallelujah. This is exactly what Moses told Pharaoh. Hallelujah. Pharaoh was flexing his muscle and feeling like a king and feeling, feeling the power of his chariots and uh, a lot of his military weapons and uh, his armies. But Moses knew where the balance of power lay. So he told him, Exodus chapter 11 verse 8. He said, And all these thy servants shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out of all the people that follow thee. And I've get thee out and all the people that follow thee. And after that I will go out. He went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. Pharaoh knew, Moses knew that God had made him a God unto Pharaoh. Praise the Lord. He was within his power to destroy Egypt. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The same thing will play out here. God said he would terrify this land and break their resolve to hold Biafra down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why is God so angry with this land? Hallelujah. There is too much oppression in Nigeria. Psalms of our original chapter 9 verse 7. Volume 1, he said, I will unseat the wicked who are so comfortable in this land and bring freedom to the oppressed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Men are being killed daily. People are being unjustly jailed, unjustly punished deprived of comforts because the wicked are in power hallelujah bible says when the wicked are in authority the people mourn that's exactly what we're seeing in nigeria today praise the lord isaiah chapter 59 verse 14 to 15 amplified bible says justice is pushed back and righteous behavior stands far away for truth has fallen on the city square and integrity cannot enter yes truth is missing and he who turns away from evil makes himself pray now the Lord saw it and it displeased him. Him, it displeased him that there is no justice. Hallelujah. Is this not talking about Nigeria? If you decide to be right, you will become a victim. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The second reason is bloodshed. Hallelujah. There is too much bloodshed in Nigeria. Men are shedding blood without. In my, even considering the fact that there is God who reigns over the earth, hallelujah. I repent, I remember patients Jonathan telling the Nigeria, see, there is God who there is God who we're all laughing, but now we know what she saw and what she knew. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 24, verse 3 to 4, King, King James verse version says, Surely at the command of the Lord came this upon Judah to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did, and also for the innocent blood that he shed. For he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord will not pardon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Fulani headsmen terrorists, Boko Haram, Islamic um, 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 states, uh, whatever, West Africa. Hallelujah. They've been killing people, slaughtering people. 
recklessly. Government seems incapable of helping anyone. In fact, at a lot of times we find it began, it began to seem, it became obvious that they were being aided. Praise, praise the Lord. None is being arrested, none is being persecuted. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And those who are arrested, within a short time, cause of powers from above, request for them to be released, and they are released. God is displeased. God cannot pardon the shedding of innocent blood. When you shed innocent blood and the blood falls on the earth, the earth cries out to God. Say, Lord, I am not a part of it. At the same time as the innocent blood is crying out to God himself for vengeance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to talk about Mazin Namdekano briefly. Hallelujah. His sin is that he's acting for freedom for his people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since the court of appeal discharged and acquitted him, the comments made by the Minister of Justice and other government officials, hallelujah, they leave a sour taste in the mouths of all reasonable people all over the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Governor Most Governor Uzodim of Imo State has made a very important statement. Uzodima clearly doesn't want Namdi Kano to be released. So he tells government to do the needful. The federal government should do the needful. My question to him is what is this needful that you want the federal government to do? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The only need for the reasonable citizens to see is the release. But clearly, there is another angle to it. Praise the Lord. For those who imagine that they can gather, gather political advantage to themselves by killing Nandekano, I have just one message for you. It's a song we used to sing as children as, uh, in, in, in the Southeast. This song means you do not touch the tail of a lion. Whether it's dead or alive, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Leave, let him go if you do not want to be destroyed. God said to me, Psalms of our original chapter 141, verse 5, volume 1. He said, I said the name the Kano will perish in that prison. They will kill him, thinking that will end the agitation for Biafra, but that will be the end. I will use the opportunity to destroy their leaders and unleash hell on this land. Only the righteous will be spared my wrath, which will come upon this land. Psalms of our original chapter 158. Verse 5, volume 1, he said, Nam the Kano will soon pass away. He will depart as a champion. While the enemy celebrates his death, my terror will strike at their heart and destroy them. The celebration will dry up in their mouths and be replaced with terror. Praise the Lord. Enemies of the Afro admonish you be careful what you dream and what you wish for. Hallelujah. I bring this message to you as an act of love. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Let him Nam the Kano go or you will perish. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. On the same hand, I want to talk about Apostle Suleiman. Those who are attacking Apostle Suleiman, I have one message for you too. Praise the Lord. Those who seek to extinguish the lights in this land, they are cursed. God told me, say he has given commands to the heavens and to the earth to hear my words. Therefore, I tell you right now, the earth will open his mouth to swallow you. Whoever you are, that is part of this plan to kill up a Suleiman or any other man of God in this land. Praise the Lord. Or indeed any other Christian. Hallelujah. I'm not saying you will die and be buried. You will be alive. The earth will open his mouth and swallow you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For whom is this message that I bring? Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 1 to, 1 to 2. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word. And say, hear the word of the Lord, all year of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. My message as to those who worship the Lord, to believers, hallelujah. I bring this message to you, why? So that you understand the will of God and align yourself properly. So that you will not find yourself wittingly, unwittingly, standing in opposition to God, hallelujah. Because of the stereotypes you have swallowed, or the propaganda you have allowed to get to your heart. Hallelujah. Guard your salvation. Hallelujah. Guard your heart. It matters what you let get to your heart. Praise the Lord. Even in Egypt, praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 9, verse 20, 21, King James Version says, When Moses released hail, threatened to release hail, the Bible says, He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh, made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord, left his servants and his cattle in the field. We know how they ended. Praise the Lord. You don't have to be a Christian to know. The God of Israel is the maker of heaven and earth. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the almighty God. He is a fearsome God. I tell you, you must fear him. Take actions to save your life 
and the lives of your loved ones. Praise the Lord. Believe and deliver yourselves. Hallelujah. In Psalms of our original chapter 22, verse 7, verse 1, say, Great destruction awaits the wicked. The righteous must separate themselves from the wicked. For the time of the wicked is fast, fast running out. They will seek death and not have it until I have accomplished my judgment on this land. Praise the Lord. Psalms of our original chapter 80, verse 2 to 3, volume 1. Tell my people who are working for this enemy to begin to guard their salvation. My terror will not spare anyone who sheds the innocent blood of my people. My terror will not spare anyone who, by whose hands my people are oppressed and deny their due. Do not allow yourselves to be used to attack Israel. Anyone who attacks Israel will receive his or her own due of recompense. I will not spare you. The words I have spoken against this brutal enemy will automatically begin to work against you too. Hallelujah. Now you know why these words have come to you. As a believer, align yourself with the will of God. Get down on your knees. Seek the face of God concerning this message, concerning Biafra. Say, Lord, our original says this is your will. Is it so? When God has confirmed it to you, align yourself with the will of God. Don't stand in opposition to the will of God. Don't get on God's way. You will be crushed. Praise the Lord. Along with the wicked. Hallelujah. Quit consuming stereotypes and propaganda packaged by the enemy. Do not live by the flesh. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, it says, They that are led of God, the Spirit, the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Stop being led by the flesh. Hallelujah. No amount of prophesying or speaking in tongues could have made God to abandon Israel in Egypt. Hallelujah. It's the same thing today. I'm telling our men of God so that you can know no amount of prophesying or speaking in tongues can make God abandon Biafra in Nigeria. Hallelujah. Freedom has come. God has decided it long before the foundation of the world was laid. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Israel did not believe Jeremiah until they arrived the rivers of Babylon. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 137 verse 1. Say, by the rivers of Babylon, there we were. We wept when we remember Zion. Yes, they that took up captives, they, they demanded of us a mix. They sing us one of the songs of Zion. They wept because they realized that if they had listened to Jeremiah, they wouldn't have gotten there. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, verse 11. We say, it's in knowing therefore the terror of God, we persuade men. Hallelujah. I persuade you by this message. As a believer, even an unbeliever, hallelujah, guard your lives. Know for certain that God does not take delight in the death of sinners. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 says, As I live, said the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. This is the God of Israel speaking. Hallelujah. Pharaoh was so blinded by his pride, he could not see that Egypt had been destroyed. Hallelujah. Until his servants helped him to see. Exodus chapter 10 verse 7. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not that Egypt be destroyed? Hallelujah. Are you not aware that Nigeria has been destroyed? Praise the Lord. Let Biafra go in peace. Nigeria must not go down completely for you to do it. God said, I will drive Nigeria backwards until they let Biafra go. This will not stop. That is the only condition for this backward movement to stop. Hallelujah. Let Biafra go. Praise the Lord. Let Biafra go. Let Biafra go in peace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you're watching me now, you're not born again. I want you to know that this is a crucial moment in your life. The destroyer has been unleashed on this land. He will see the blood and pass over the righteous. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you need to move from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Acts of Apostles chapter 4 verse 12, that there is no other name given unto men among given unto us by which a man shall be saved by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to know that your life, your salvation has been paid for on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. If you're touched and you want to give your life to Jesus, repeat after me now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of the living God. You came from heaven to the earth and the flesh. You suffered and you were crucified and you died on the cross of Calvary on the third, and you were buried on the third day. You resurrected for my salvation. Thank you, Lord, because I'm born again. I pray for you now. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for these beautiful ones, these wonderful ones you've brought into your kingdom. 
Lord, they are saved. They are safe from every calamity in the name of Jesus. The destroyer will see the blood upon them and pass over them in Jesus' name. These ones are pillars in your house. Hallelujah. They will stand up for the church and for the brethren. They will stand up for the word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I bless them. I bless their hands. Praise the Lord. They are blessers of people in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord said to me, He says, Stretch forth your hands. Hallelujah. See, I will perform notable miracles. I will heal the sick and even raise the dead. If you're watching me and you need healing, you need a miracle anywhere in your life, in your business, take it now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have the dead in your midst, bring my words to his ears. Will arise and be made whole in the name of Jesus. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.